Good morning. Welcome to worship with me and a few here that are just going to be participating in worship today with us at Ripley Presbyterian Church. We have discontinued in-person worship in respect and from the recommendation from our state board of health once again to return to uh, no in-person worship. We have just a few people who are providing leadership today with us, but uh, for the next uh, foreseeable future, until our numbers improve in our state, we will not be having in-person worship here at Ripley Presbyterian Church, but we'll continue our virtual offering that has been a true blessing and inspiration to many of us, even as we continue to be the church weekly and daily, although we can't gather together, we can gather in the love of our Lord. So thank you for joining with us. I have just a couple of announcements I want to share with you verbally this morning, and then we will also lift up our prayer concerns uh, regarding our announcements, I bring good news today that our Tip County Good Samaritan Center goal of $500, we blew that completely out of the water. Blew it completely out of the water. We surpassed $1,000, more than doubled it, with $1,125 collected for those who are most vulnerable in our community during this season. Thanks be to God. May our big God be glorified. And thank you to each of you for being the church. Wow, what a sense of joy it is to share that good news with you. This month we'll be focusing on a Christmas joy offering for our mission outreach. We also give thanks to all of you who continue to tithe to support our ministry at Ripley Presbyterian Church by giving of yourself so we can give to our community and the world around us. We thank you and grateful to partner with you in ministry. Uh, you, I do want to encourage you, go to our Facebook page, not just uh, today, but take a look at what we have experienced this past week. Uh, Lynn Hill has done a marvelous job of celebrating our hanging of the green service. For those of you unfamiliar with our tradition, that is usually the service that takes place on this day, the second Sunday of Advent. But since we were not having in-person worship, we uh, made the decision that every day this week, we would emphasize on one of the themes of hanging of the greens. So take a look at those. Uh, Lynn has laid out the scriptures that accompany those days, photos from our sanctuary, you will be inspired. So go and take a look at those on the Ripley Presbyterian Church Facebook page where I'm broadcasting from this morning. Are there any other announcements we need to share this day? Uh, if not, I do want us to review our prayer list. We have several additions. I invite you all that are watching to post your prayer concerns. We'll make sure those are added to our prayer list. Uh, and we will lift them up during the prayers of the people portion of our worship today. We're glad to see Shay watching with her family who's had some health issues. And we've been prayerful for you and your family. And I got a good report from Shay and Jason yesterday that she's doing much better. Carol Hebner, who's on our prayer list, she and Don continue to adjust to uh, her uh, broken bones. And we pray and uh, give thanks that she is recovering Nancy and Joey LaBreer both were diagnosed with COVID-19 this week, uh, really having a hard time. And Nancy says she's doing a little better than Joey, but his breathing's been a little more challenging. So let's continue to remember Joey and Nancy LaBreer as they battle COVID-19. Uh, continue to lift up our dear friend, Tony Huddleston. Little Stan Horton's doing wonderful. The Horton family, he had COVID-19, but... He's progressed well, as has the rest of the family stayed healthy. Some additions we want to share this morning to our prayer concerns. We want to remember uh, <clears throat> the family of Billy Faye McBride, who died, and it is my understanding as a result of COVID. I'm sorry, Bobby Faye McBride, as a result of COVID-19. Uh, many of you know Tony and Rodney, that would be their father. And we lift up Bobby Faye's entire family comfort 
during this time of loss and sorrow. We also want to add to our prayer list Gail Allensworth. She's a cousin of our own Randall Beavers. We pray for Gail. And uh, we want to remember Kent Montgomery. Kent's had some serious health concerns. He's going to be in the hospital for the next uh, probably seven days. Margaret and I were talking through text this morning. That's uh, Mary John Deal, son-in-law, Kent, longtime members of our church who've since moved down to Pontotoc County. But we continue to remember Margaret, you, and Kent, your family. Also, Margaret's daughter, Marissa, uh, Marissa Duncan, Mitchell now that uh, many of us know Marissa. She's had some heart uh, challenges. A young lady, very young, about my age, Elizabeth, very young. So um, uh, Marissa and I were at Ole Miss together, a lovely lady, attorney in North Carolina. Marissa, we're praying for you and your family as well. As there are other prayer concerns, please post those uh, during our time of worship. Now I want to give you one other quick announcement. Also, we want to remember our health care workers uh, during this time of increased COVID numbers, right? Pray for those, and let's all be as responsible as we can to keep these numbers down. Wear our masks. Practice social distancing um, for the sake of those who are trying to take care of all of us. We want to lower that curve as much as possible, and we pray that that vaccine comes sooner rather than later. So we pray for those health care workers. Now, one final announcement. I do want to say this is an exciting time of season in the worship of our church. For those of you unfamiliar with our tradition, we call this season Advent. Now, last week was the first Sunday of Advent where we focused on the theme Hope. The Huddleston family came and lit our Advent wreath. This week, the theme during the Advent season is the word Peace. And we'll have an emphasis on understanding how Christ brings peace to us and Elizabeth and Benton Elliott will help us to understand this theme of Advent more today as they light the second candle of the Advent wreath. So I think you will find this inspirational and a, a gift of joy to you as you worship together. So with those announcements and our prayer concerns, friends, it is my great pleasure to say to you now, the love of Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us worship him now in joy and in gladness.
such a such a beautiful arrangement there for our prelude this morning. Uh, one other thought that we want to share with you to inspire and accompany you during the Advent season is that every night we have the lights of our windows lit to share our beautiful stained glass windows and an inspiration to you during this, e this season of Lent. So if you're driving around town, you want to be inspired by the beauty of God's sanctuary for all of God's people. Come by one evening. Okay, friends, share with me now our call to worship from Isaiah 40. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Would you join me now and let us receive and pray together a prayer of confession. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed. And grant us grace that we may grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Would you join me now as we offer our silent individual prayers of confession. <laughs> Amen. Hear these words of life from John 3.17. Believe the good news, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Be at peace. Amen. <clears throat> Beginning in Isaiah 35, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here's your God. He will come with vengeance and terrible recompense. He will come and save you. In Philippians 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. The Advent wreath contains a variety of symbols to help us in our preparation for Christmas and the second Advent when Christ shall come again. The five candles are lit, one each week, as a reminder that God has progressively revealed himself to us over time. The first purple candle, which we lit last week on the first Sunday in Advent, represents to us that Jesus Christ is our only true hope. The color purple represents penitence as we repent of our sins in this time of preparation for Christ's coming. The second purple candle that we will light in a few moments symbolizes the peace which only Christ can bring into our lives. The third candle represents the joy that is promised in God's word which we have in Jesus Christ. This is symbolized by the pink color. 
The fourth candle, which is purple, represents the love of God revealed in the gift of Jesus Christ to the world. The center candle, the Christ candle, represents the source of all life, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The color white reminds us of his purity, his holiness, and his sinlessness. On this second day in Advent, we will relight the first purple candle of hope. And now for the first time, we will light the second candle, which is the candle of peace. Amen. I pray you were inspired as I was for that introduction of this Advent season. Let's pray together. Almighty God, as we've heard through the celebration of our Advent lit wreath lighting, you are the true light of the world. We ask now, oh God, that you open our eyes to help us to see the path that you have lit before us as your people, your church collectively, and as your individual followers to serve you to your glory. Come, O Holy Spirit, open our ears and hearts along with our eyes to help us to receive your word this day. May you inspire us and mold us and make us more in your image for the glory of our Father above. In Christ we pray. Amen. Our gospel reading for the sermon today is from Mark chapter 1. I'll begin with the first verse. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Recently, I shared with uh, some of you that I worshiped last week on the beautiful beaches of Destin, Florida. And on one trek down the beach, as Manya and I were going to have a meal, I noticed that I was the only one of hundreds of people who had my shoes on, Elizabeth. I just don't really care for people to look at my feet. It's not my most enduring attribute. I just don't have pretty feet. But in Holy Scripture, many of us are familiar with these words of Isaiah that say to us, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. How beautiful are the feet of those who proclaim peace of our Lord, how beautiful are the feet of those who say salvation is ours from God our Savior. You 
You see, what I embrace in that message of Isaiah, and as Paul would say it also in Romans, that it is beautiful when we bring good news of Jesus Christ. Did you hear it in our text today? That the very first words the gospel writer Mark said, this is the beginning of the good news. Friends, embrace that with me today. That God loved us so much that he chose to bring to us not the bad news that we so often can turn on our television and receive, but in Jesus Christ there is good news. What a gift of Advent. And the good news that we celebrate that as Christ came to earth, friends, the primary gift of good news he brought to us was the gift of salvation, the gift of life. In our text, we also hear this. Not only did God love us so much to bring us good news, but it's how God brought us good news that also speaks of our Lord's love. You know, I was thinking back over this Thanksgiving season. I remember several years ago in 2003 when President George W. Bush made that secret journey to Iraq to give greetings to our troops and say to them in a very personal and an intimate way, thank you for serving your country. Thank you for giving of yourself. Thank you for risking so much that we may have life and safety. It was one thing, the neat thing about the surprise visit, they had prepared for the president's speech to be read. So the same words could have been communicated of the president by someone else, but it meant so much more, the fact that he was present with them. There's often an intimacy. We communicate in our presence that is even beyond our words. Friends, in our scripture today, not only do we receive the good news that there is life through Jesus Christ, but God loved us so much that he sent Christ to be the messenger of the good news. He came down from glory unto heaven to take time out for us to say, my love is for all creation. And what is the good news? Beyond salvation, if that's the only good news we ever had, we would be eternally blessed. But there's also more good news for us in Jesus Christ, even in this Advent season. Did you hear our scripture today near the end of it? It said, as John was saying, the one who's coming after me is more powerful than I. I'm unworthy to untie the thongs of his sandals. You see what John was saying? The good news is that Jesus comes not only for us and our salvation, but Jesus comes for us to empower us in our daily journey. You know, when I was learning how to drive, I learned how on a, a straight shift pickup, it was a little weak Chevy Love uh, diesel. I had to plug it in in the wintertime so it would be able to start in the morning or get me some ether and squirt it in there. And I had to learn how to drive that straight shift, and I learned quickly that when you're going up a hill, you need to switch down to a lower gear and get more power. Now, had I not utilized the power that was there, I would not have been able to continue to move forward. In fact, if you look at it the other way around, if you keep that truck, if it's a straight shift, in the lower gear and don't receive the power to go faster, you're going to eventually blow up the motor. It's going to run out. Friends, we're no different from that mechanical engine. What if we, inspired by the power of the Holy Spirit, will embrace the power that's been given to us to shift gears and get beyond our strength and to call on the strength from on high that God has gifted us the Holy Spirit to strengthen us in our journey in life until our Lord returns. Friends, that's the promise of the good news of Christ too. We have power from on high, the Holy Spirit to journey with us.
and strengthen us. You know, in the animal kingdom, in the animal kingdom, uh, when an animal feels threatened, they have a tendency, I saw recently in a documentary, they make their self larger. Have you ever noticed that? I saw a video recently on one of the news channels where this guy was out hiking out west and he got chased by a mountain lion. And as the mountain lion was chasing him because she thought her cubs were vulnerable, she'd throw up her arms, her front legs and paws and make herself larger. We've all seen those cobras on television that they fan out their necks and make themselves larger. And that big old silverback gorilla, doesn't he hunker around and strut around and make himself larger? Even my crazy cat Willow, when she feels threatened, her tail swells up about that big and she turns sideways so she makes herself larger. And you know, we as people often do that too. When we want to display power, when we want to display victory, when Benton's run that marathon, I'm sure one of the first things he does is extends his arms and says, we made it. How many times have we watched sports on television when somebody feels victory that they make their self larger? They extend their arms and they say, I feel powerful. Friend. Hear the news of Advent. Hear the news, the good news of a Savior come down from heaven. Not only did Jesus come to this world to bring good news, but he came all-powerful. And at the most vulnerable time in all of creation, when we needed power to deliver us from our sins, our Lord Jesus displayed his power in this way. He stretched out his arms victoriously on the cross of Calvary to give his power to us. And all creation. Friends, our Lord has come and He will return that we may have His life, love, and joy forever. Amen. I invite you now to pray with me the prayers of our people. Oh God, we lift up your church and we pray for those who provide for the world around them by living out beyond themselves. We pray for our nation as we search for healing and restoration as a broken land. We lift up the sick, the hurting, and the hopeless in our community and beyond. We pray for our individual friends and family searching that you would bring miracles of grace for every person on our prayer list and those even beyond that we know, maybe even strangers, perhaps even our enemies. And now, God, with the peace of being your children, we say together the words you taught us in prayer, praying our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as people of Christ, let us depart this day remembering what it is that we believe by our Savior by affirming our faith in him, reciting together our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thenceforth he shall come back to judge the quick, the living, and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, as we now prepare to go forth as the light of Christ, go with God's blessing for us as his people. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance, his gaze upon you and give you peace, church, now and forever. Amen.